Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. Charles Hart and Charles Parr were pioneers in the tractor world. Their Iowa factory was the place many believed the American farm tractor industry really got started with Hart Parr No. 1, built back in 1901. I think what made it stand out probably the most is because it was the first uh, tractor that was built commercially was the Hart Parr. And I, there, you probably see on some of these tractors, they have a sign on the founders of the tractor industry. Uh, that, that's probably what made it stand out the most. Gerald Mettler of Menno, South Dakota, knows his Hart Parr history, and he should. Dark green machines have been in his blood from the beginning. I guess the reason I collect Hart Parr tractors is because that's what my dad had at home on the farm. This here is a 1630 Hart Parr. Actually, it's the oldest one I have here. It's a 1926. And it is the same model that my dad had on the farm. Today, Gerald has collected and restored not just one, but a whole bevy of these historic Hart Par beauties. We have three 1836 Hart Pars here. There were three different models, the G and the H and the I. Now, the main difference here between the G and the H is that the G was a two-speed tractor. It had the short fenders and it had a round gas tank. When you get over to the H, that one there has an oval gas tank. It has a three-speed transmission, and the fenders come all the way down at back so the operator didn't get quite as much dirt on it. By the 1920s, farmers wanted smaller, lighter, handier tractors, and Hart Parr answered the call with this model. Yeah, the tractor is a Hart Parr 1224, and it was built in 1928. It happens to be a 1224H model, which means that's the last one. It has long fenders and it has a three-speed. The earlier one only had two speeds forward, one reverse, and it had shorter fenders. Of course, this one here, uh, being a smaller tractor, they did plow with them, but they also they disc and they harrowed. And uh, of course, the haying, the haying was really still done with horses, pretty much. Uh, although some some did use these for haying also, cutting silage. Rough and rugged, but with a few comforts like a seat and those long fenders to keep dirt and mud off the driver, Gerald believes this model had plenty of features farmers probably liked. It only weighed 4,800 pounds, a good bit lighter than earlier tractors, and it offered three forward speeds. I think the top speed on this one here is about four miles an hour. One thing that is unique about these hard parts and the older tractors, you don't change oil in them. Uh, all this, this has an oiler on top and it keeps drip feeding uh, oil to the uh, engine. And from there it runs down into the bull gears. And from there it runs back on the ground. All you do is put new oil in. Gerald figures the Hart Par 1224 would have set you back maybe six or eight hundred dollars when it was new. Not bad for a tractor that could pull itself up by its bootstraps. These here holes were cut in purposely uh, because they did. They used this tractor to do the bootstraps test. And what the bootstraps test is, there's cables run down through there up to a frame, and then you put the tractor in reverse and you roll the cable up on the wheel, and it picks the tractor right off the ground. It was a, a device, a little, uh, what should I say, uh, gimmick used by Hart Power to show that they had a small light tractor. Yes, indeed, the bootstrap lift was a Hart Par marketing idea that raised the 1224 to new heights. But this tractor was the last of a long green line because in early 1929, Hart Par became part of the new Oliver Farm Machinery Company. So thank goodness, Gerald Mettler is doing what he can to keep Hart Par history alive. The decal on this tractor here is original, so it's pretty, pretty old, but what I did, I clear-coated over the top of it about 15 times before I painted the rest of the tractor to try and save that decal. I wouldn't trade it for a brand new one. 